On this episode of Lumifa Classic, we'll be putting a modern AC system in a classic XJS. Welcome back to Little Myth of Classic and if you're new to my channel, I hope you stick around and consider subscribing. I put out new videos every week on some Jaguar and Classic car related content like this XJS behind me. It's a 3.6 liter manual, it's a friend of mine's XJS and he's decided to upgrade the AC system. It has the original system which was working somewhat okay but when he was out touring and he was down in the south of France and it was really hot, there was a big strain on the compressor and that compressor was that big. Harrison A6 compressor is putting a lot of strain on the engine so the idle speed went down really low, it would almost stall at idle and it wasn't really cooling very well and it just wasn't working as it should so he decided to buy a Fen Air kit, a very similar kit that I have fitted to my 1977 XJ12. I've already made a video where I've showed you how that kit works in action, I'll put links up above and down below so you can check out the V12 version of this kit. They're very similar except they have you know different hoses and some different brackets but it basically works in the exact same way. So when you buy a Fenair kit you can either get uh, you know just a compressor and hoses and the receiver dryer and the expansion valve like the customer for this car has gotten or you can also get a new condenser up front you can also get a new evaporator as well. So in this case we're using the original condenser and we'll try to use the original evaporator they can be kind of tricky to get apart so hopefully we can get all those fittings apart without damaging anything because as soon as you damage anything you'll have a leak in the system and that can be a little tricky so fingers crossed that will work well. So we'll head over to my workbench, we'll have a look at all the parts in this kit and then we'll go over to the car, have a look at the AC system at the moment, we'll take off all the old parts and put all of the new parts on as well and then when everything is done take the car to an AC specialist who will back down the system, make sure it holds the vacuum and fill it up with the correct level of gas R134A and then check for leaks and hopefully there are no leaks. Uh, this is a pretty involved process and take quite a long time so I will probably split this up into multiple videos just to not make the videos too long. So let's head over to my workbench and have a look at what you get in the kit. I've laid out everything here that comes in this particular kit. This is for a 3.6 XJS where you're keeping the original condenser and your original evaporator. So you get a nice set of new hoses with a nice pressure switch on it and the correct fittings for the new gas. They're all set with O-rings and everything in here which I'll show you a little later. You get some great instructions in here with really good pictures, so it's very clear and easy to follow. You get a new expansion valve which works on the new gas. You get of course your compressor over here is a nice sanding compressor with a custom bracket here. You get the other part of the bracket here which is the bottom bracket and here is the adjuster to adjust the fan belt for it. So you get a new fan belt as well. You get a new receiver dryer. You always need to replace your receiver dryer whenever you have a system open because these track moisture. So it's very important not to open these up until you're ready at the AC shop to fill it up again. You can mount in place but you can't open that. I will show that a little later. And then you get some of this, not exactly sure what's called some thermal wrap that you put around the expansion belt. I'll show you that a little bit later as well. And you get some zip ties as well. So it's a very comprehensive kit and it's everything you will need to upgrade the AC system. So let's head over to the car, have a look at the old system and start taking that off. Here's the engine bay of the 3.6 liter XJS and most of the AC equipment we'll be dealing with is on the exhaust side of the engine. So down there you have the old compressor, it's the Harrison A6 compressor that we're going to be removing, putting a Santa compressor there instead. You have the two hoses here that we'll be replacing. One of them goes up here up to the condenser. There's a fitting here we'll have to undo so that's where the new hose goes. There's an o-ring in there that we get with the new hose as well. You have the receiver dryer up there and there are two fittings one on each side there. We'll have to undo those as well. Undo the dual nuts up there to the clamp so you can clamp in the new receiver dryer. However like I mentioned before 
we're not going to unplug that and plug it in until we're at the AC shop. You have a second hose that goes up here and into the bulkhead over there into the evaporator. And over there you have a secondary hard line which then goes into the expansion valve as well. But we'll have a look at all that in a bit and undoing that because this is really the most difficult part of the whole operation. So the first thing I like to do is we're going to remove all the hoses so we get some space so we can more easily remove that compressor. So I'm going to set up the camera and we'll undo the bolt on the back of there, undo those two hoses. I'm going to undo that fitting so we can get this hose out and then we'll have a look over here and try and get those fittings off so we can replace this hose as well and we can get the old expansion valve off as well. I'm going to start by undoing the fitting here that goes into the condenser. Since I'm reusing the condenser on this car, I'm very careful just to get everything off in one piece and not damage anything and not bend anything. But if you have a new condenser in your kit, then of course you still be careful, but it's not as big of a deal. Also, one more thing to note, this system is completely empty of gas. There's no gas in it whatsoever. It's been professionally emptied by a shop. So make sure that your system is either you know completely empty from a possible leak or that's been checked by an AC shop and has absolutely no gas left in it because you're not allowed to let any of this gas out into the atmosphere. And it's a health hazard as well. So that's very important before you start. Also, one thing I've noticed, if you have a look at the caps here for the low and high pressure sides, it seems like whichever shop serviced this car last put the wrong caps on. It's supposed to be the other way around. It's supposed to be the red one here and the blue one over there, which I'll show you in a bit. So that's a little funny. But I'm going to grab my two wrenches here. Hold this side still. And shouldn't be that tight because they're sealed by an O-ring. But there we go. For the last couple of weeks, I've gone out and sprayed every single fitting here with some penetrating fluid that can creep into all of the threads here to hopefully get everything off easier. If you're able to do that, I highly recommend it, especially if you're in a situation that I am that you're reusing some of the old parts. It definitely does help to lubricate everything off and hopefully get rid of any oxidation. Now this should be completely loose and I should be able to get these two apart. There we go. You can see the old o-ring in there. Everything looks fine here, so that's what we're keeping. This is what we're removing. So we'll head down to the compressor and undo the other side of this hose now. There's a bolt down there in the back of the old compressor. I can, we'll undo that, and then you should be able to get those old hoses off. Here's a bolt and the plate held on. Now these should be loose. Just gotta be careful not to get any oil from the compressor on anything. I'll get that one out of the way. And the other one is loose there and can just be laid down to the side for now. Now we'll have to loosen it in the other end before we take it off. And here comes, in my opinion, the most difficult part. Getting the fittings off in the firewall without damaging the old evaporator. Since I'm reusing it, I'm going to be really, really careful not to damage it. If yours is leaking and you're replacing it, well, same thing goes with the condenser. If you're not reusing it, you'll have to be as careful, but I'm reusing it, so I don't want to break anything. Basically, there's an elbow that's going in to the firewall, and you have a big fitting on top. You have to be very careful when you undo that because the elbow is soft and hollow. The fitting's really hard, so... If you just try to undo it without holding anything on the bottom, it will just destroy everything and it will start to leak, you'll bend it over. So you have to hold the bottom with a spanner and usually maybe have a helper or two. Someone hold the spanner on the bottom and then try to undo the top either with a crow foot, which I found works really well, or a spanner that you possibly bend. Uh, however, in this case, I had to be a little bit more drastic. I actually used a small little Dremel tool to cut into the nut to be able to pry it apart to get it off. The guys could not get that off at all. It was stuck on there solid. But I managed to get it off and the threads have not been damaged. So this pipe here, though somehow it's gotten stuck again, let's see. So you can see it is completely loose. 
So I can get that out of the way and then I'll show you how to get off the expansion valve. It's kind of hard to film that whole thing because I'm, you know, I'm afraid of getting sparks and stuff on my camera, but like you saw, I just cut the nut down a couple times and then I got it out there. If you can see down here, this is six sided so you can hold a wrench on here, down here, and hold that still. And this is the elbow, let's see if I can remove this out of the way. This is the elbow that you don't want to bend because then you'll have a leak in here. You'll have to take your whole dash out to replace the whole evaporator. On this side as well, you don't want to bend anything or damage anything. So hold the bottom one here. I found that a 14 millimeter fits pretty well. And then take the top one, which seems to be a 19, and you can simply undo it. This one was not on there tight at all, so that's really good news. I really think it did help to soak everything in penetrating oil a lot. However, that one was just, it was almost welded on there. So, oh, could probably undo the last of that by hand. Okay, now I'll just put this to the side a bit. Get a wrench in there and get this valve off. Once again, I'm going to hold on to the valve and then just undo it. It's a little fiddly to undo, but I will loosen this up and then I'll show you to get the capillary tube out. This part's a little bit hard to film. I'll try and show you here. So I have a wrench here holding on to the bottom here. It's a 7 16 wrench. And then there's a capillary tube up here. So this part here is the fitting I'm trying to undo while holding this bottom still. Once again, not breaking that elbow. So I'll crack that off. I'll have to do that off camera. It's because I can't really get a camera in here and see what I'm doing at the same time. So you open that up and that just screws out. So that's that half of the capillary tube. The other half you can see here goes into a little fitting here with just two little screws you can undo and you can pull that out. The next step is to remove the old compressor. The first thing you have to do is undo this top part of the bracket. There are two nuts here. You can undo it here as well if you want to, or you just fold it to the side, just loosen that a bit. When that's to the side, you can pull the whole compressor off and you can get the tension of the belt off. And then I'm gonna go down here and lower, take off the lower mount. Then I can carefully lift this whole compressor out. It's pretty heavy. Put it to the side and then we're ready to clean up everything in order to get the new compressor in place. One thing that's important to remember is to disconnect the power cable going to the compressor so you don't damage it. Now the old and very heavy compressor is out. I just need to get the mounting bracket off, which is down here. Held in place with four bolts. Here, here, there, and there. When that's off, all this can be removed. I just need to have a look at the threads. Clean those out with some brake clean to make sure they're perfectly clean and ready for the new bracket to go in here. And here's what that bracket looks like off the engine. It's just held on with four bolts here. So now everything that has to be removed is removed. Now it's just really important to clean out all of these thread holes here with some brake clean. And I'm going to clean up this whole area a little bit so it looks nice and shiny. And then we'll bolt on that new bracket get ready to put on the compressor. I washed all the thread holes with brake clean just to make sure there's no debris in them. Now I'm just blowing them out with some compressed air. So once they're all clean, I'll take one of the new bolts from that new bracket, make sure that they thread into all of these holes. I took one of the bolts and I managed to thread them by hand all the way in each of the holes so they're clean and nice. Here's that new bracket, goes this way up against the block. Grab some bolts and try and fish it down here. Might be a little hard to see on camera. I tried a few camera angles and it's kind of hard to see, but it just fits down here where the old bracket was. Here's the last one. I'm gonna do up finger tight. And then I'm just going to tighten up all of them. We can go and get that new compressor. I cleaned out these four thread holes in the same way. Made sure that the bolts could thread in all the way. I've laid down the compressor here on 
cross members. This is the bracket that goes up here. So I'll hold this up with one hand and thread those screws, tighten it down. Then I can take the parts that go out from the lower bracket, the support parts up into the compressor, and the front part, which is the adjuster. Put that in place, and then it's time to replace the belt, and then all that can go together and be tightened. And now the new compressor is mounted. The four bolts up here, fully tightened, and the ones down there as well. I also put on the new fan belt now, which came with the kit. Goes over there and on the outer pulley. But everything is still a little bit loose because I still want to be able to move things around when I fit all the hoses. So I still have to tighten up the belt, but I'll do that with my hand down here or possibly down below. So with all that fitted, now the next thing is to clean up here a bit more, fit the new thermal expansion valve with new O-rings, and then I can start fitting all the hoses. And then it's just doing some of the wiring down there, but that will be in the next episode. And that's it for part one. There will be a part two coming up just in a few days. I just want to split up the videos just not to make them too long. Like you saw, it was a pretty big pain to get that big nut off there, or the fitting off there from the evaporator. And that can happen sometimes. On my V12, I could not get it off at all, how hard I tried. So I had to cut everything off, and then I ended up having to get a new um, evaporator because I damaged it, and you have to take the whole dash out and everything. So that was quite a big pain and an extra cost. So that's one thing you should think about that at least in my opinion, you should be prepared to uh, have to replace the evaporator as well, just because it's just a, so easy to damage. Like a small slip of a key or something, and you or a key, I mean a spanner, and it, you break something, and it's gonna leak, and you have to replace it. So, if you're lucky, you can get it off really easily. This one was stuck on pretty bad, but you know, with a small Dremel tool and just a lot, a lot of patience, I got it off no problem at all so but be prepared that you might have to replace every component in the system also one thing i forgot to mention that's very very important is that you cannot cut any of the lines with you know a hacksaw or a dremel tool because then you'll get debris into the system and any small metal filings you get into the evaporator will make its way down into the new compressor and completely ruin it that would just be a waste of money and you'll have to replace everything. So any debris you get in that system will ruin any part of the system. So that's very important to know that to keep the system very clean. So now when you have things apart, you know, put some plugs or something over so you don't get any debris down into the evaporator or into the condenser as well. So that's it for part one. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and why not check out Fanair's website? They make some great products, and I've been very, very happy with their system on my XJ12. So, until next time, I'm Adam, and this was a little bit of a classic. I'll see you soon.